uh, let's talk about uh, um, Daniel Marcos. Was another speaker. Uh, Daniel uh, is from Mexico. He graduated from University of Monterey. Uh, actually, it was Monterey Technical Institute. He got a degree in finance. Mm -hmm. His dad. Now he was. He was. This is not a rags to riches story because his dad was a. He had a PhD in economics as well, so he's no slouch either. Oh, okay. But when he was a very young boy, probably seven, eight years old, uh, the family uh, went to visit an uncle in Texas. They were there for Christmas holiday. Mm -hmm. Christmas Day, Dad comes down in a suit when everybody else was opening presents, mm -hmm. and he says, where are you going, Dad? Why are you in a suit? He says, I have to go back to Mexico. I have a client that I have to take care of an issue. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, being a kid, he's crying that dad's not going to be there on Christmas day. Asked his mom, why does dad have to go? And our uncles are here. Mm -hmm. he says, well, your uncles are entrepreneurs. They own their own business. Uh, they don't have to handle clients <laughs> on Christmas day. Yeah. So he thought right then that day, that's what I'm going to do. When I, when I grow up, I'm going to own my own business. So when he got out of school, he was offered a position in Hong Kong uh, in 98 when they were signing the, the treaty over from England. And he was uh, essentially the liaison uh, between Mexico and uh, Hong Kong folks, uh, financial mm -hmm. institutions. So he did that for a couple of years and he hated it because, again, he was working for someone. He was not an entrepreneur. He has an entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. So he quit his job moved back to Mexico and started a, and I'll just call it an E-Trade kind of a business in Latin America. So he was the first one. He said, back in those days, if you just had a dot com at the end of your business, you get, anybody will give you money to start mm -hmm. this thing up. Wouldn't so, it be A-Trade in for speaking Spanish? <laughs> All right, smart Alex. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish, so I would, wouldn't know. Okay. So, he set this company up. He had uh, Chase, um, Lehman, uh, Goldman, all those people were uh, backing him. Mm -hmm. So he had tons of investment uh, to get this thing off the road or off the ground rather. And he ended up merging with a Brazilian company uh, in, in, a, in about a year. Yeah. And then a uh, final piece to that is that he ended up selling the business to the largest financial institution in um, uh, Argentina for $70 million. Now he was 25 years old when this happened mm -hmm. and he sold the business to a 24 year old. <laughs> I, I love it. And this was in, uh, at the end of uh, almost 2000, mm -hmm. well, wasn't quite 2000. Yeah. So he sold it at the peak. And then a few months later, you had the dot com crash. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and the Good 24 timing. year old was not real happy with his purchase. <laughs> anyway, so he took his money, uh, was able to uh, get a visa, moved his family to Austin, Texas, and started a mortgage company. Mm -hmm. And they were doing quite well. They had offices in, uh, throughout Texas and California and a couple of other states and 120 employees. And then in July of 2007, he gets a call from his bank, happens to be uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, and said, uh, you know those loans that you just closed yesterday? We're not funding them. And all those loans in your pipeline, we're not funding those either. Yep. So he had to shut that business down. Of course, that was the start of the you know mortgage collapse. Mm -hmm. He had to shut that business down. He had several million dollars in his bank account that converted to minus a million dollars. He was now a million dollars in debt because he had to pay to get out of the leases and, and whatnot. Um, and so, and worse than that, he had to go back and tell his wife, no longer do we have a couple of million in the bank. We owe a million dollars and I've had to shut the business down and our visa was attached to us owning the business here. So now we have to move back to Mexico. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Big change. Yeah. So I mean, it was for a lot of people. Yeah. So kind of rags to riches to anyway. So he, after that, I'm not going to go through the entire story, but I'm not sure he you, is. Yeah. I thought you just went through the entire well, story. No, I mean, it goes on for a little bit longer, <laughs> but he is partnered with, uh, um, I can't believe I can't remember his name. Um, 
Vern Harnish, the author of Scaling Up. Yep. So he now has a business where he consults with different businesses on how to scale up property properly. And the, the, the thing that uh, stuck out to me uh, the most was if you want a nice lifestyle business, that's going to have a nice profit margin for you and your family, then you try to stay with, uh, within the 12 to 15 employees. Mm -hmm. You get any bigger than that. And your only option is to set your company up or scale it to sell to somebody and get completely out of it. Yeah. And, and only if you can keep the profit margins where they need to be. Yeah. Well, the whole point of going above the 12 to, to 15 is so you can scale it to sell it. Mm -hmm. And uh, otherwise, if you're just trying to grow that business and just grow it and grow it, you end up doing what we all talk about anyway, is that you're uh, just going to create this machine that constantly needs to be fed. Yep. And uh, your margins are going to continue to go down and down. You're going to have, you're going to do more and more work and you're going to get less and less profit for it. So that magic number is between 12 and 15. Correct.